go. Hey, Vaughn. Hi. Welcome back. Thanks. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been longer than we intended. Yeah. When, when was the last episode? What number? We wanted to do 100. Yeah, I know. That ended up going down the drain. What number is this? <clears throat> 112? Good. 11? I think. Something like that. Ooh, 1111. One, one, one. One, one, one. I can cope with that. <laughs> yes. Very true. I think the last one was like in the 80s. Okay. Mm. Cool. Has been ages. It has been a long time. Yeah. What's happened in your world? Uh, all the things. All the things. Um, I changed my name on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> That's been like a big thing I've been thinking about for a while. So I'm not the breathwork shit, but I'm Siobhan Lou Breathwork. I know. And I'm loving it. Really loving it. I'm just trying to navigate my way around that right now, though. Changing it from professional to personal. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had two pages, and I'm like, I can't be fucked, like, running two pages. I just want... I mean, the shed is all kind of personal stuff anyway, so why not combine the two of them? And especially while we're in isolation, you know? I know. It's all personal breath work, so I just wanted to make it one massive thing. Yeah. I've kind of not started with it yet, but I've just changed the name. That was the first step, and now I'm figuring it all out. Mm. That's new. That's very big, though. Yeah. It's good because people will start to see, like, all of who you are. Yeah. Not just the breath work because that's one aspect, but you also yeah. love. What are some other things Well, you they love? were on, like, two separate pages. So right. I love <clears throat> you. <laughs> good. <laughs> My two dogs. I love drinking coffee, wine, you know, mm. hanging out with epic people. Mm. Yeah, and just really good discussions. So now I can bring them all on one page instead of, like, yeah, I just I didn't even think about the other page in the end. Mm. That was it. I know it's good. I think it's good as well to um, for people to see. Not that it ultimately matters because it's like your Instagram and you can do whatever you want with it. But I do. Yes, and <laughs> and you do. But having the balance of like yes. Breathwork is an incredible healing modality and this and this, but I also love to drink red wine and, yeah, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I'm human. Yeah. I'm not a shed. Exactly. Yes, you're not a shed. That's true. But I am a shed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The shed is a part of you. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. What do you think will change? Everything. Like, I'm, uh, I'm planning. I'm planning. I just want it all to change. So that's mm. why I'm kind of navigating at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And you did a water fast last week. I know. We did one. We did one, yes. But you brought the idea to our attention. Yeah, and I wanted to do it for spiritual reasons. It wasn't just in case anyone was like, oh, what, what, like, you know, people normally do fast for, like, weight loss stuff or whatever. But Mm. I wanted to see what would happen with, like, our thoughts and, you know, the attachment. And, yeah, so we did – we were meant to do five days and we lasted three but we got heaps from it. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it was really fucking hard. Like, so hard. Mm. It was probably the hardest fast I've ever done. Yeah, and you've done juice fasts and things yeah. before as well. Yeah. So that is actually saying something. And, like, taking time off coffee. And if anyone knows I'm obsessed with coffee, you know. <laughs> but stuff like that, That this was the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Yeah. What was the spiritual part about it? Like, how... Um, for people that aren't aware, like, how could not eating food be spiritual? Uh, just to clear... Well, for me, it was, like, clearing my mind and my body and the thoughts of, like, when am I eating and what time's food and, like, just taking that um, that area out of our, our lives mm. and just to see if, like, it would cleanse the body, the mind, you know, like, it's all one. Um, and it did like, oh my God, the first night I did it, my thoughts were insane, like insane. <laughs> they were, and I can't even explain them. They were just racing like a million miles an hour. And I'm like, whoa, this is weird. <laughs> what were they? What? What were the thoughts? I just said, I can't explain them. Oh, you can't even They're explain They're just like, them. just go nuts. Yeah. Um, and the meditations were. They were amazing. Yeah. 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 We sat in, um, silence for about 20 minutes. Yeah. And. There were crazy thoughts, mm. weird thoughts coming up. Yeah, I was getting all these, like, swirly patterns and yeah, things. Yeah, you got like, visions. It was like I was in a float tank. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it makes sense, cool. like what you said before, if you're not thinking about because so much of what we think about is, like, of a primitive background, mm. you know, like one thing or another. It's like, sure, you're not thinking about hunting a bear or something, but, like, you're thinking about food. Yeah. You know, if you take away all of those fundamental needs – 
It's like what what is actually in there, you know? Yeah. And you can probe some pretty deep depths. Definitely. Did you find that? Yeah. Well, I just I just found it fucking hard. <laughs> I know it was really hard, and it was a good. Exactly, like a really good test of discipline too. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, we and I'm like we're both pretty disciplined people. So, um, but yeah, three days. I know. And why did it end up <laughs> being three days, not five days? <laughs> so this is like the the downfall of it. So my yeah, on night three, my body started going into like. Um, it, to me, it was like a seizure, <laughs> you know, like my legs and my arms were going crazy and I couldn't sit up. And I said to Tom, I always <laughs> refer to if you've seen Wolf of Wall Street, when yeah. it's on the ludes. <laughs> <laughs> and he can't, is it like, he can't get like down the stairs or into his car. Yeah. And I was like that. I know you were. Like I couldn't, I had to get Tom to like pull me up and sit me up and then ended up feeding me. Cause I was like, I need food. Like yeah. I can't function. Um, yeah, I couldn't do. I couldn't sit up. I couldn't do anything, it and I couldn't crazy. even. I didn't have enough energy to panic. I know. <laughs> I was like, this would be the ultimate panic attack if I had the energy to have one. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> but I didn't, so it didn't happen. I know. But yeah, that's how it ended, and then the next day I was like back to normal in seconds. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was feeding you veggies at like twelve a.m. at night. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then I ended up raiding the fridge because I was like, this is fucking great. <laughs> and then Tom's like six eggs. I know. I'm like, what are you doing? Just making eggs. Just cooking <laughs> at midnight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was weird though how fast that came on for you, you I know? I know, it was in seconds. Yeah. I had it, but not to that extent, you no. know? But mm. we came to the conclusion that because, like, I didn't ease into it. I was just like, right, we're going to stop eating. And before that, mm. I was like walking Abby every single day, like training, moving, always like doing. Mm. And then we just spent three days on the sofa watching Outlander, <laughs> drinking yeah. water. Yeah. Um, and then my body's just not used to, like, being still for that long. And mm. I reckon it just completely freaked out. I think so. If anyone has any other, like, any other theories, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> I want yeah. to know why my body was, like, yeah. Go on. It was, it was disabled. Shut down mode. Yeah. yeah. It's completely disabled. What would you say some benefits were, though? Like, if we actually really give some uh, people some takeaways, yeah. like, what were some benefits? Um... Well, I just can't stop eating veggies. Like, I have yeah. this whole new appreciation for, like, vegetables and eating them. And realizing, like, I'm always like, oh, I just trained. Like, I need all this food. Or pre-training, mm. I'm like, oh, in case I faint or feel dizzy. And it's like, you don't need that much. Like, you really don't need that much food for whatever you're doing. Yeah. You know, especially if we can last three days with just water. Not that we could do jack shit. Um, we had broth as well. Yeah, we know. had bone broth and mm. I had coffee because... Yeah, coffee. You know, I've done no coffee. Before. I had tea but it wasn't caffeinated yeah because i wanted to try a caffeine fast as well yeah then we had veggie broth and bone broth yeah um but not much we had like one of each one a day one a day one yeah, yeah one broth a day um but then there are people out there that have gone 20 days without any food whatsoever some have done the youtube ones i was watching they're like 30 days yeah. Or more. yeah so it's amazing what the human body and mind therefore are actually capable of yeah, that yeah is, and yeah. it's a good challenge like it's good to meet your kind of <clears throat> discipline and willpower at the same time mm. you know mm. and then grow it yeah because you keep pushing through yeah mm. but yeah if anyone's going to do it like 100% 100% research the shit out of it totally don't totally. take my word for it <laughs> this is just our experience yeah yeah yeah. What would you have done if you could take have your time again? Like, how would you prepare for the fast? I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Just say no. <laughs> just not do it. Yeah. No. Next time I'm going to do just 24 hour fast. I think they're mm. amazing and they're good just to you know clear the system. But yeah, fuck that. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm all for like challenging and stuff, but I think that one I've just done once and whatever. And I know people that have done it and it got me like they felt incredible. Mm. I didn't. So that was it. I think for me, I would I would probably I would prepare for it more. I would um, maybe chuck in like a twenty four hour fast once a week, three weeks in the lead up or something. Yeah, so three just times. Just to kind of get used to it. Yeah, and then I would cut out carbohydrates and reduce that, so I'd be on protein and fat yeah. reliably, and then maybe only have one to two meals throughout the day, mm-hmm. so I can learn. Because the hardest thing for me was um, getting comfortable being bored. I know. And then be that like, oh, wow. Taste. Yeah. Because so much of my time is taken up eating. thinking about food <laughs> and, and eating. Yeah. I was like eating for like 45 minutes just before. I know. Just eating a massive steak. steak. But God. you think about when people say things like, including myself, oh, you know, I've got so much on today or I'm really busy or I don't have enough time. It's just like, do you have to eat? 
Yeah. Just go go without a meal. Yeah. No. You know, just do another 12 hour fast. Mm-hmm. And then once you get all the stuff done that's making you busy, well, then you can eat. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Boredom was the interesting one for me. Yeah. I was fine with that. You've always been good with boredom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Happy to be bored or ha- no, happy to do nothing. I don't think nothing. I've ever, I don't, I'm, I never use that term. No. Ever. I'm never bored. Yeah. Ever. You've always got something to do or. Yeah. I'm just happy by myself. Happy doing nothing. <laughs> happy being a loner. Yeah. Yeah. Happy We're not even house. in a relationship. You just kind of sit over there. <laughs> <laughs> just meditating all the time. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I know. I've got another question for you, Vaughn. Oh, really? Really? I have a few prepared that I didn't Do tell you, you about. Mm-hmm. Shit. Yeah. Shit. You know how um, people say that breath work is really, it's incredibly powerful for like bringing up traumatic experiences, making you more aware of like the things and events in your life that have shaped you and become who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, how can people factor in like a daily breath work meditation and why, why would a daily practice be really important as well? So how can they do the breath work? Yeah. So, well, like I say all the time on my Instagram, like the seven minute one. Mm. Um, well, they can go to my YouTube. Mm-hmm. So I've got the seven minutes on YouTube so they can look up. I think it's, I changed it. Have I changed it? Have you? Maybe it's Siobhan McLeod or Siobhan Lee. Oh, no, it's still Siobhan McLeod. Oh, is it? Siobhan McLeod. And then it's on there. And then they can practice seven minutes. They can pick two songs and practice it every single day. Um, And what the seven minutes does is it just kind of like, I always just say in like easy terms, it gets you out of a funk or out of Mm. your head. And it kind of just, what's ever going on with your thoughts, it kind of just either calms them or stops them. Um, I always come out of it just being like, fuck, I'm just totally like a reset. Mm. That's how I like to explain it. Um, and it feels so good. Mm. So good. Just a daily one. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little, and it's seven minutes. Fuck. Like yeah. who doesn't have seven minutes, you know? You actually finally have more time after you've done it as well. Cause you're yeah. like, oh wow. It creates, like, it creates space yeah. in your head to be like, right, what do I actually need to do? Mm. You know? Yeah. So that's how they can do seven minutes a day. And then for men, we've been discussing this a lot, I would encourage men to sit in silence for 20 minutes and breathe from their legs, like inhale from their legs. I say that to my male clients. Um, They can do the breath work in the afternoon and do 20 minutes of silence in the morning. Mm. Um, Why why is silence for men so important? Because they grow in solitude. That's where they become more masculine. Mm. Mm. Unless, of course, you're and a feminine man. And women are craving a masculine man. <laughs> <laughs> we can't all go to Scotland for them. Yeah, you say that a lot. <laughs> it's true. They're yeah. right over there. That's a, good, that's a good topic of discussion, I think. Masculinity and femininity and yeah. how you see that. and How do you see those polarizing well, opposites? Um, I just, I'm like all for that we are all complete, we're completely different, masculine and feminine, and we should celebrate that we are different. Like the feminine has their strengths, masculine has their strengths. And you know, that can be like, I'm masculine and feminine. And so are you, like we have those areas in the body. And when working with breath work, um, like the kind of right side of the body is the masculine and the left is the feminine. So whatever's coming up, I can kind of intuitively know what's going on with the breath and the body and the person through that. So I'm... Yeah, so I feel like it's important that people know it. So that's why I mm. say for men and my male clients is like trying to sit in silence and female clients, it should be more of like the breathing and getting into the flow and dancing and singing. And I think I said it to one of the girls the other day. I was like, go, like she was like going to vacuum or whatever. I'm like, mm-hmm. go vacuum and play some music. We like dance with your vacuum and kind of get into your body because that's how the feminine seeks their pleasure, whereas mm. the male needs to be like on his own in solitude, and it's very different, you know. Yeah. Um, it just reminds me of that scene from Do Looks Like from Mrs. Doubtfire, where he's yeah. like singing that song and doing the vacuum as well. I probably should do some of that too. Yeah. <laughs> Open up your feminine. Yeah. You know, that's, um, yeah, but that's why I say in terms of meditation, females to do more of the breath work, um, males to sit in silence for sure. And it depends on how those two essence is kind of you know where you're at 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 the time like you can imagine a guy who's you know just been to war or something and he's like super rigid and stoic almost to the point where and you I, i know you've had clients like this before where you're getting these ultra like 
masculine guys that actually do need to release yeah, more well, and dance more and yeah. tap into their yeah, feminine. Yeah, because you have both, every human has those sides inside of them. So wherever they're at, you know, um, yeah, you can speak about it in many different ways. Mm. But if a guy is obviously like that, then yeah, 100% come do breath work. And well, I think everyone should do breath work anyway, just to see who they really are and create space for who they really are. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. What, what's the typical client that you kind of see, like, from, from both male and female? Like, you said before, you, you know, this is how masculinity grows in solitude and by mm. austerity and challenge. And femininity grows with pleasure and energy and light and all mm. these things that you and I are really interested in at the moment. Yeah. You know, for personal reasons and professional reasons. Yeah. But, like, what kind of typical clients do you see and, you know, what are kind of their issues, like, men and women? Um, I feel like I attract people that have been through the same stuff that I've been through. Like mm. normally for females, they've either been in relationships where they've been cheated on or, you know, the men have been assholes. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, or um, clients that have had anxiety and panic attacks because obviously I've been through that. <clears throat> um, and in terms of male stuff, it's normally to do, I attract males that need help in their relationships. Um, I always find they need help in with their partners or where they're at in their relationships and I try and offer obviously help with that and guiding the breath work through that as well. Mm. Yeah, so I feel like people that have been through similar stuff to me, which is obviously amazing because I can help through experience and breath work and meditation and fitness and mm. spirituality, which I'm obsessed with. <laughs> what is it about spirituality? Like what what is that what does that word even mean? Uh, to me, I think it means like just being in touch, like with your true authentic self, like soul. Um, and then I was trying to make that better through different, different discoveries, like different ways. There's like a million things like, yeah, I just love anything to do with it. Mm. Anything, you know. It gives you like a mission as well to like, what's yeah, for me? Like, how can I follow my mm. heart more and. Yeah, like today I listened to a podcast about like shad- like your shadow self and your shadow work. And I was like, got home and I'm like, right. Yeah. <laughs> Where else is my shadow hiding? You know, that was like today. And then, yeah. You do a lot of that though. I like know. your whole business is set up around I shadow know. work. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm always just looking for more ways. Mm. Yeah. Do you have any ideas of where the next place you might go will be? In terms of doing more of the shadow work, well, which is another way of saying just inner healing work, yeah, yeah, you know, well, more it. understanding of how things Self. have made you, you. Yeah. Um, I really want to do like some Reiki stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been called to that a lot recently. And then I'm not sure. I just want to keep adding to the tool bag, you know, probably meditation teaching in terms of guided. I'd quite like to do that as well. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. That's, you've not ever told me that. I know most <laughs> yeah, of what you You have questions for me and I have surprises for you. <laughs> you do. You definitely do. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. I feel like I'd quite like to do that. I didn't before because I was like, oh, I don't think I could be that person. In breath work, I'm like, come on. <laughs> get it out. Let's go. Cry. Yeah. Yell. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm probably going more to both of them. So I could offer both. But I definitely, yeah. Yeah. That's probably the next thing. But I'm still too obsessed with just doing breathwork stuff. Yeah. People are loving that, it that, too. Yeah. Oh, loving it. It's good. It's I good for the time right now. I think it's people are lost yeah. and isolated. And yeah. You, you've seen like patterns emerge with like what people are dealing with now, like being unable to really go out and do as much as they normally can. And yeah. Definitely people have to like sit with their thoughts more because they're a lot yeah. of them are, are sitting inside and it's bringing up um, a lot of stuff around re- relationships because they're being with their partner way more often. And the other thing is, is like, which is I didn't expect is people are like afraid like mm. people are really fear like fearful scared of this whole thing that's going on so yeah they come and breathe it all out and shift it um but that's been really common which i didn't expect to yeah to happen afraid yeah. of what though like what what do you mean like afraid of just loads of different fears oh. around the virus like mm. what's going to happen with that with their job family money you know all all the things yeah yeah, and practice practicing like just being able to go with the flow a bit more. Yeah. And I suppose it's just like 
a time where, because you can't compos- possibly control it, practicing letting go, literally, mm-hmm. yeah, of other things in tough. your life and, you know, being in that control freak place. Mm-hmm. And also, if you let go of too much, you don't have any control over anything. Yeah. So you've like got to have that balance between yeah, chaos sure. and control freak. Yeah. Yeah. And how that plays in your life. and mm-hmm. mm. For sure. For sure. Yep. The breath work is 100% helping. So that's the main thing. Mm. Yep. Love it, Bonnie. Mm-hmm. Outside of work? What's going on? Um, this is like the, the Siobhan catch-up sesh. I know. <laughs> um, outside. <sighs> I don't know. I feel like I work all the time. <laughs> um, this is embarrassing. No. Do we even have a relationship? I know. We do. We have, we have amazing, a good relationship. Amazing relationship. Yeah. It's fine. I don't know. I'm just obsessed with my dogs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> our two our two beagles. I am. Like that that's it. Um yeah, just ca- I'm catching up with all my friends now. I know. I, like, I know. We had a big weekend of catching up with friends and yeah. That's it really. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose like it's it's good when you actually like your job because it doesn't really feel like I've never once heard you refer to breathwork as work. Never. Apart from the fact that there's work in the word breathwork. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, you you don't. You just seem to really you you seem to have really kind of found your flow with that yeah. one. And yeah, I'm loving it. Would you ever want to be a coach again? No. No. Never. Done forever. Yeah. Hundred percent. Moving on. Yeah, that's done. <laughs> You know, I'd still obviously like if people ask me for, I mean, they still do like help or advice. I'd still like to give it because I can. Mm. Um, but that's as far as it goes. <laughs> no sessions. Yeah. I'm mm. more going into the the spiritual kind of, yeah, that's that's the next path for me. I think. Yeah. Until something else comes along. And I think it's good because spirituality, like you said, based on your definition before of coming back to the truth of who you are mm. and finding a lane, creating a lane in this world, um, helps people create theirs. You yeah. know, I think one of the reasons why, and I'm biased about this, but the why I love your marketing so much is because it's very authentic. I, I believe, I, well, I mean, I know because there's no change between what you put out there and who you are. Well, this, like is, this is this is this. Yeah, I like to think <clears throat> that. That's hard for a lot of people, though. Mm. People find that quite hard. You know. I just I can't even relate to that. You know. I think it's gotten better though. <clears throat> I think you like you. I don't think you ever had an issue with it, but I think you're um, only growing in the confidence of being able to put your real self out there now yeah that's why I think I really I like the idea now that I've just got this one page and then Mm. that's it you know I'll just that that's all I have to is just be me and talk about breath work as well because and that's a part of me now too so Mm. yeah yeah it's good yeah loving it (laughs) what else one um I don't know that was it. I just I really wanted us to discuss um the water fast. And that was it, really. That was the main the main thing that I've kind of not discussed on my Instagram. I think people are like, how did it go and what's been happening? So now I can now we can share this and they can <laughs> listen into it. Yeah. You getting any more thought to the book? No. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, I would no, I would. I would really like to do it. Um probably after like a cu- a year, a couple of years maybe. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Just of like why? Why why that far away? Because then I've got more under my belt. I see. I see. <laughs> you know, more humans, more breathwork people, more stories, even though I've got like a million stories, I need to start collecting them really. Mm. You can get people to you know, ride in theirs as well. And Mm -hmm. that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Mm. sure. I think it's so brilliant writing and obviously I'm very biased about it, but like it gives you power over it, you know, Mm. your story. It's like, that was an aspect of who I was. Mm -hmm. That was then, this is now that detachment, you know, that doesn't own me. I own it. Well, I just say people like after breath work, I'm like, go journal because it gets it out of the body. Mm. Like the whole point of breath work is getting all your shit 
out of the body because we don't want to hold on to it. It's the same as writing. Yeah. No, it's another tool. <clears throat> Get it out of the body so you're not holding it. Or you can like treasure it like a book and mm. have it forever. That's why I really want all these stories. Yeah. Um, book. So I really like forever. what you said then, Von. Treasure it so you can love it and own it. and Because yeah. that's the thing as well. Like once it's released and detached, it's not necessarily shit mm-hmm. anymore. No. It's parts you can look back on yourself and enjoy and reflect upon. And yeah. If you love who you are now. Yeah, 100%. You'll have it forever. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have like a um, journal outline that people can do when something comes up for them in breath work? Um, no, because it's probably not my strength journaling. So when I do breath work, um, I will say to people, like, I just do bullet points. So I'm like, right, what came up? And then if I need to elaborate on the bullet points, then I elaborate on them. So maybe just like whatever came up in the session, do like select bullet points and then elaborate on each bullet point and, you know, let your pen flow. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I did it on my course and I was like crying as I was writing. <laughs> I know. You know. So it's obviously very therapeutic. Um, Do we still have those notes? <laughs> oh my God, no. Fucking. <laughs> Dogs ripped it up. <laughs> Dogs destroyed every single piece of information I, I know. know about breath work. Everything. I, I know. Went, gone. That's all in my head and I have to trust it. Yeah. And you will. You yeah, will. of course. It's, it I'm can... still devastated. I like, I like my notes. <laughs> I know. But you can write them again and, you know, if they're mm-hmm. still up in your head, you can write them again and you can use them for the book. Oh, of course. I mean, I've not referred to them in a very long time. True. So, you know. You like, hardly ever referred to them. No, I don't. I just like having them there just yeah. as a safety net, which I don't need anymore. But Yeah, we're, we're trying to um, think of what happened. The dog's like, for everyone's context, Siobhan had her notes on the ground we walked home Lots. one day yeah. and the whole thing was shredded in this room. Yeah. I had like three notepads. Three filled. notepads worth of shredding by the dogs. Yeah. Filled they were just the very, very blissfully looking up at us as though they'd done nothing wrong. I'm so you know? excited to see you. Yeah. Now here's all your trash. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Go yeah. pick it up so we can play more. So like it was very symbolic. We're trying to look at that experience. Yeah. You were. I'm like. It's oh, symbolic. Shit. It's like, yeah, you don't need it anymore. You can dispense yeah. with it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, Vaughn, what about um, some goals, I suppose, in between now and the next podcast? We're 20 episodes away or something like that before, you yeah, know. Yeah, true. That's a good point, actually. So what I'm, would you like to... I'm really wanting to hold, which people keep asking me, um, hold a breathwork event in like a really, like in a bigger space. So the reason I'm not doing them in the shed at the moment is because it's a, it's a pretty small space. Um, and obviously the this whole virus thing is spread by breathing, you know, and I teach deep breathing. So, mm. you know, just for everyone's safety and my own, I'm not going to hold them in there until it's like well gone. And it seems like we're going backwards. So it'll be interesting to see where we are in 20 episodes. Yeah. Um, so I want to, my goal is to try and find a place where I can hold a, a big event and do like a breathwork event and tailor it to like, um, like inner child or trauma or something like a specific sort of thing. Um, yeah, that's like a goal for that. That's the dog. That's Archie. <laughs> that's one of them. Just interrupting our podcast. <laughs> um, that's one goal. Um, I'm not really sure about, I mean, yeah. I, 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 we want to move house. That's the second goal. <laughs> True. So our landlords will listen to this podcast. Yeah. Um, so finding a new wow. epic house and I really want to move further, way further out of Melbourne and you want to stay in this area. So. Well, we'll see. We'll see. That's like a personal goal. Um, to move. Yeah. To hold a workshop session. Yeah. Congruent with, you know what inner child healing yeah something something i've got a few topics like i've got like five that i'm gonna try and i'm gonna ask obviously the the people what they want the humans it's all about them the humans um yeah i'm trying to i don't really have any other like i probably should get some it's made me realize i need to get some more goals just this question yeah (laughs) because i'm like shit i have like two two goals i know i'm gonna have like 10 um but i'm pretty happy just flowing along right now yeah. yeah. No, no, you seem very chilled out at the moment. I know, I really am. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, you know, I think that's a good point. People people yeah, seem to, to think that they have to do this is a lesson I've only just learnt for my own self, is like this incessant need to do all the time. Mm. And you're clearly flying the flag of being. Yeah. 
you know. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Which is really good. It's good. It's nice. Nice and motivating for me. Mm-hmm. It's certainly shorten my goal list, and you know, as long as I can work out when I want and meditate and write. Yeah, you know? and that's like the daily things. Yeah, know? and I then you got to work. But. Move and meditate, and I'm fine every day. Whether that's like walking the dog, and I do different meditations every day. So. You always say. When did you start saying that? <laughs> Move and meditate. Yeah. All the time. Move and meditate every day and you'll be fine. <laughs> when you say your... that phrase, I just said move and meditate. <laughs> right. That's, okay. That's it's like thing. I always say since now. <laughs> since my past. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now. Move and meditate. Mm. Cool, Bonnie. Yeah. Love having you on the show. Thanks. I love being on the show. Mm. It's a good mini catch up. I love being on your coffee chats. I know. IGTVs. We need to do more of those. Yeah, they're fun. They're really fun. Maybe we could try and chuck one in right now Well, if we've got time. Yeah. I love um, working with you as well with the programs. They're really fun. Yeah. They're really fun. It's worked out really well. Yeah. People yeah. get the counseling and the breath work. and Yeah. And they also, people always need someone to chat to afterwards, you know. Mm. I think it helps to unpack and integrate and because <clears throat> yeah. things will come up. And it's not like you're not someone they can chat to. You know, I think you're brilliant at what you do. Um, but having the frameworks of the journals that the clients write and stuff, I think is really, really powerful. And yeah. Yeah. It's a fun little team thing we got going on. I know. It's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Love it. Love it. Well, until next time. Yes. Love you. Love you too. Thanks All for right. having me. Guys, thanks very much. Talk soon.